again, um, it's Alison Lambert here from OnSwitch and we're going to take you through business auditing as a process and why that would be useful for you to do. I'd just like my colleague Emily to introduce herself as well. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm the marketing manager here at OnSwitch. So today we're going to look at business auditing as a process. Um, why would you want to do it? Um, why it's important that you do do it and if you were going to do a business audit why we would recommend that you go with the fixer process which is based on balance scorecard. So Emily why would a practice want to do a business audit because when we look at some of the practices that we work with um, one of their commonest reasons is they don't know what to do and um, that, that maybe new practices opened or they're worried about losing clients so just thinking about why it would be a good thing for them to have a balanced scorecard audit. Um, usually because they don't know where to start, which is yeah. where, where the problem lies, and it can be sort of several different areas, and that's why we look at the four key areas, which is customer, yeah. team members, operational effectiveness, and finance, and mm. it can be in any of those areas that problems are discovered. One of the, the beauties about the balanced scorecard approach, which is the, the structure of the, the fixer audit, is that if you just looked at finance, you might think that was the only place there was a problem. Yeah, no, yeah. well, that's not the case. It can it, There could be problems in each four, all four of those areas, basically. So mm. it's important that you look at the whole picture, not just one element of the business. And one of the beauties of using the balanced scorecard, which is the basis of our fixer, um, our business auditing process, the fixer, um, called the fixer because of Alex Polizzi, obviously, who we quite like as... Um, you may have seen on the telly stomping around hotels and restaurants and um, it's the same process is the idea behind the balanced scorecard um, which when we have to explain to practice is that you need to look at your 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 team what's happening in the team are they happy are they working yeah. are they trained and they're the heart of the business and they represent the business and that's where the whole organizational culture begins with the mm. team so it's really important to focus on those and the things that maybe most practices kind of assume that they come in, they're paid, they do their job and wonder why they're losing clients. It could actually be the, that interaction with the team members in the first yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that quadrant of team is really important. Yeah, definitely. Um, customer, again, why they like you, why they don't like you, how many are you getting? Some real core customer KPIs. Yeah. Um, and the number of practices we work with, are, it's amazing how many of them don't have the data. Yeah, they just don't know, they don't look and they don't measure and you know, how, how do you know if you don't measure things? So sort of number of new client registrations, call conversions, that sort of thing, mm. really, they need to be looking at. So in terms of the balanced scorecard, so that looking at the team, looking at the customer, we'll leave finance to the end because that's where most people start. But operational effectiveness, looking at the big things in a practice. So how many people walk through the door? How many phone calls you get? Are your rotors right? Have you got your surgical rotor right versus your consult rotor? Yeah. Those really simple things seem again to be areas that are missed by many. Yeah, and I think in one of the surveys that we've done, that was one of the most challenging things that practices find is, is the resources, putting the right people in the right place at the right time. Mm. And obviously as well, looking at consults, are they running over time? Um, how, are they, how are they fitting everything into that consult? Are they doing the right things you know, to make the most of that consult period as well? So that whole auditing process, so we've got the team, the customer, the operational effectiveness of delivery, and finally finance. It mm -hmm. is important. Yeah, people tend to focus on the finance over everything else, but if they concentrate on the other three things first, generally the finance comes on its own. Yeah. But it's certainly important to look at that aspect as well. And I think one of the intriguing things when you look at other successful businesses, you look at Disney as a, a business role model. Mm -hmm. When you look at Disney, Disney measure their customer experience because they know profit follows. They yeah. don't measure profit as a primary factor. Absolutely, yeah. And so the, the, the concept of profit is a lag indicator that profit follows something else happening. Yeah. So if you just follow your profit, you're missing so if profit goes down, you're wondering why, because you've missed the customer delivery or the staff engagement, yeah. team engagement. Yeah, but if you get all that bit right, first yeah. of all, then the finance bit sort of falls into place afterwards. So it's a good process, and it's a balanced scorecard is a robust process used, Absolutely, used yeah. by many other businesses. So when we look at the fixer process, from if we look at each of those four areas, when we work with a practice, we ask them to fill out an audit form. Mm -hmm. So they have to then go into their own data and fill out against those four areas. Yeah. Um, finance simple data from their accounts or the practice management system um, team what do we do for the team though I mean that's I think perhaps people maybe don't realize how important team members are yeah no they are very important and uh, we kind of assess them by doing a survey using the Gallup 12 method mm. um, which is 12 simple questions that measure the levels of team engagement amongst mm. the team 
Um, so it's a simple survey link. The staff can go in. It's all completely anonymous. They mm. go in and fill the survey in, and then we can measure against those set 12 questions. And that's something they could do sort of every six months or every quarter if they wanted to, to keep on top of it. And the validity of Team Track, the, our version of the Gallup 12, is that we have practice data so we can benchmark against most practices score yeah. very highly on question one and question two. Yeah. You know, do I know what I'm meant to be doing and have I got the cook? Yeah, the they're sort of the, in the, the ninety percent range. Those yeah, are, no, they're very, good. very good compared to other sectors. Um, but where, where we fall down is, uh, I think it was 50, about 57%, don't actually get the chance to talk about mm. their progress and their achievements yeah. with their managers. So that's something that we need to work on as and, a profession. And as a, as, a, as a benchmark process, the Gallup 12 process is that if you can score yes against each of those 12 questions, that you will have an enhanced business performance. So that data is Absolutely. tens of thousands of data points, which is why we chose to use a pre-existing survey yeah. and modify it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do for the for the team. Um, for customer, that's a huge amount of, of measuring in the customer section from mystery shopping through um, box pop, through street research, key opinion leader. Just yeah. talk me through because that's a load of stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose the first place to start would be uh, an MPS uh, survey, which is Net Promoter Score. Mm. Um, so you can send a survey out to all your clients um, and basically uh, the key question is would they recommend your practice to their friends and family yeah. and it's on a scale of 1 to 10, yeah. which is called the Net Promoter Score. And in terms of what we would expect, we're looking for a target score of at least 85% on MPS. Though we do know of practices with negative net promoter scores um, that need a little bit of polishing. Yes. Um, so targeting an 85 on that one. Mm -hmm. Simple, easy to do. Would you recommend that that's a running monthly thing then for most practices? Absolutely, yeah. It's definitely important because you're always taking on new clients as well. So mm -hmm. it's always it's always good to have that, that measure yeah. in place for all yeah. new clients as well. Yeah. And how about the street research and the key opinion leader box pop? So the street box pop and the, and the key opinion leader box pop. Just yeah. For the, the benefit of the guys watching this, maybe never done this before, why yeah. that's really important. So the street survey, which is what we call a street box pop, um, is basically going out onto the street to get the public's perception of your practice. Mm. Um, so we ask everybody in in a certain area what, whether they've usually heard, a high street, usually or, a high or, street or, or outside a, a pet shop or something like that. Mm. Um, asking them if they've heard of the practice before, mm. who they use, uh, mm. what they think of the practice, yeah. and they're usually really honest opinions and it gives mm. you a really good um, gauge of what, what the perception is on yeah. the street about your practice. About you and your competitors. And the competitors, it's a very yes. local yeah. model, so looking at it. And the key opinion leaders, kennels, catteries, groomers, farriers, yard, you know, yard owners, body workers, those kind of characters. Why is that so important? Um, that's really important because basically your client was probably more likely to go to one of those key opinion leaders to ask their opinion mm. on something before they go to the vets. Mm. Um, so if I had a problem with my horse's feet, I'd go to the farrier first. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. go to the vet first. Yeah. Um, so it's important to find out what those key opinion leaders are mm. saying about you and mm. whether they are recommending you as a yeah. practice. And that's quite startling data at times, which yes. goes into the fixer. So when, when we look at the, the fixer report, we've, we've got a, a fairly chunky document, and in there is all of these four areas of the scorecard. Mm -hmm. So your finance data analysed, your customer feedback data, yeah. your, your team position, and that whole thing put together. Yeah. Um, as a fixer report then, we then recommend what you do about it. And I think Absolutely. that's possibly a point of difference versus other available options. Yeah, definitely, because there's no point giving them all this data and then not helping them and telling them how they can make it better. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really important part of the document that we give those recommendations yeah. because that, we're the experts on it. So we've done all the research um, and that's what we would recommend that they do to improve. And yeah. we're not just there to give them the report and walk away. We're also there to hold their hands throughout all mm -hmm. the changes if they want us to. Yeah, and I suppose that's one of the lovely things in that um, when we look at the, the foot, this is the autumn um, footfall, we go back to some practices that were fixed, some of them four or five years ago now, mm -hmm. and looking at how that's had an impact on their business, their rebranded, their repositioned, they're growing. And yeah. It's a dynamic, and 
tend to stay with us after a fix and not go away and hold hands. Yeah, I think pretty much all of the fixes that we've done, they've stayed with us in some capacity. Yeah, yeah. and we can do a refresher fixer through our um, business EMS programme where yeah. the students will come and do a, re a renewed version yeah, as part like a mini of their, fixer, yeah. their fourth and final year studies. So it, it's keeping in touch with them. So Absolutely. if you're thinking about business auditing, then um, I would seriously recommend you consider a fixer because not only do you get the wealth of a wonderful process, but you get an ongoing relationship which for you to sort your business out is what you really need. Thanks for listening.